Hi, my name is Julie Lutarski, and I am currently a teacher at Plainfield East High School. I have been in the district and have taught now for this is my 15th year. I'm a family and consumer science teacher. During this time, I have taught everything from culinary arts one, two, and three, uh, culinary arts dual credit, parenting, child development, teaching the preschool child, teaching internship, and fashion one and two. Why do I want to teach at Glenbard East? So I think the biggest reason is that Glenbard 87 is essentially home to me. I am a graduate of Glenbard South High School. So I have a lot of fond memories of high school with my teachers and coaches and a lot of great people who really made a positive impact on my life. I am also a local to the community. We live in Downers Grove. And as much as I love my current school, I wish I could move it closer. I really like being involved in my school and I would like to attend more community events, plays, musicals, sports, etc. And it just gets a little bit more difficult when you live further away. Why did I enter the teaching profession? So I can remember vividly being in Mrs. Hungerford's child development class sophomore year when she asked me, what I wanted to do when I grew up. And at the time I answered an elementary teacher. So she replied with, well, why don't you do what I do? I teach big kids and little kids. Meaning that because she runs the preschool program, she gets to work with high schoolers and preschool kids. And, you know, I thought that was a really cool idea. So moving forward, that's what I studied and that's what I chose to um, do with my profession. Mr. Taki was my track coach. He has been a huge influence on my life. Just an amazing man, amazing coach, amazing teacher that, you know, cares about his kids past graduation. He was at my wedding when we have fundraisers for our daughters. He is always present, always contributing, just an amazing human being. And, you know, lastly and most importantly, why I wanted to be a teacher was I wanted to do a job in which I could make a positive difference. And what better way to do that than to work with, you know, the world's most important resource, which is our children. The greatest impact on my career is probably Julie Mueller. So when I was a first year teacher at Plainfield South High School, she was another teacher in my department. And then later she would become my department chair. And she really taught me to focus on what's important with kids and not get tied up on all the trivial details. Okay. What's best for this kid? How can we help them do that? Um, essentially showing a lot of patience with our students. Um, even, you know, students that are more challenging to work with and, you know, that sort of thing. She was an amazing leader department chair. She was protective of her teachers she looked out for our best interests and she really, you know, made the school feel like a warm, welcoming, safe place to work. In learning about race, culture, ethnicity has been my students. I think it's incredibly important to make them feel seen and heard and important. And I think we can do that by building relationships with them and just listening to what they have to say. One of the turning points in my career was a few years back when a student asked me to read her personal narrative, which is an assignment students do their senior year, where they write about obstacles that they've overcome in their life. And this particular student had a family history of alcoholism and abuse. And when I read it, I was really, you know, really impressed by her ability to persevere and become the smart, strong, kind person that that she is today. And so then after that, I started kind of throwing it out there to my students. Hey, you know, if anybody wants to share their personal narrative with me, I'd love to read it type of a thing. And, you know, students, you know, would give me their essays and I would read them. And I found that she was not the only one. Um, a lot of my students come from, you know, families um, of hardship and even students that I think didn't. <laughs> um that seemed like they had perfect lives. Then I find, oh, their dad died in a car accident two years ago and things like that. So I think it's important for students to feel like you understand them. And, you know, just that you're aware of 
cultural differences, such as right now we are in the time period of Ramadan. And as a culinary teacher, I think that's really important for me to understand because I have students that are fasting sun up to sundown and, you know, we are making delicious food. <laughs> so I try to ask the class, you know, if anybody is practicing Ramadan, you know, feel free, you know, I can, um, you are welcome to participate in the labs if you just, you know, prefer to do that and abstain from eating, or if you would prefer not to be in the room, I can arrange for you to do an alternative assignment in another classroom, you know, just let me know. And, you know, um, building relationships with the students, listening to them when they talk about Ramadan and, um, how they feel about fasting and, you know, what I can do as a teacher to assist them. A lesson I've done on safety sanitation, or I do, you know, kind of every year in, in culinary arts because it's so important, is talking about hand washing. Okay. Um, I started brainstorming with the kids. Okay. When are some examples you should wash your hands? Um, so they may say things like after you sneeze, after you go to the bathroom, when you, you know, blow your nose, handling raw meat, things like that. But then I kind of put it back on them and say, well, you know, the number one cause of foodborne illness, unfortunately, is food handlers. It's not, you know, unsafe food. And a lot of times it's staff workers not washing their hands when they should and cross-contamination and things like that. So we talk about why are we not washing our hands? Are we lazy, forgetful? You know, do we have a bias and think that we are not dirty? Um, so what I like to do is the Petri dish experiments. We go around and we swab different things, surfaces, cell phones, doorknobs, the handle of the refrigerator, um, faucet knobs, et cetera. And we kind of, you know, they can visually see those bacteria growing after a few days and it kind of makes it more real for them and emphasize why it's important to sanitize surfaces and wash our hands and refrain from touching dirty things like cell phones while we are cooking. How I work with struggling students. So my motto kind of is meet them halfway. So for example, I had a student added to my fashion class about halfway through first semester and he came once and then he really wasn't present in school. And so I asked the dean, what's going on with this kid? And she said, you know, he really shouldn't be here. He should be in an alternative school. He has been expelled from two high schools. He has a discipline sheet a mile long. I don't think he's going to make it here. He, um, his... The only reason he's here is because there was an error in registration and he was allowed to register, but you know, his mom is revoking his special ed accommodations in order to you know, qualify him at this point. And so it was a whole thing. But I found that when he started finally coming to class, if I met him and I went up to his desk and approached him and said, hey, this is what we're doing today. Can I help you? What do you need help with? Do you want me to show you? Do you want me to sit with you at your machine? Um, you know, what do you need from me? And I found that when I did that, he was cooperative. If I didn't do that, I found that, you know, he was not a self-starter. He would probably just sit at his desk and do nothing. But if I met him halfway, if I asked him, how can I help you? He was cooperative. And I did that, you know, every day as much as I could. When he unfortunately made some bad decisions and wound up in, in school suspension, I put a sewing machine on a cart. <laughs> and some supplies and I wheeled it down. At the time I found out that he was food deficient at home and he was really only eating at school. So I would, you know, throw on some treats, a Coke, some granola bars and, you know, meet him down there and we would sew together. And I think because I did that when it came to the end of the semester in, you know, trying to get him where he needed to be to pass the class. And I said to him, look, I need you to finish this project and this project and get at least a 70 on the final he was able to meet me and he was able to do that. And we were able to make him successful together. So I think it's really important that the students know that, you know, you're not getting caught up in the trivial. You want to help them and you want to help them, you know, do what they need to do. And I think if you do that, they'll meet you halfway. You asked a little bit about me. And I think um, the reason why I'm sharing this is because it's really important to me that the people that I am working with understand where I'm coming from and why I do what I do. So I am the mother of two 
beautiful little boys who are everything to me. And first of all, if I'm going to leave them to go to a job, it can't just be a job. It has to be something I am really passionate about and I really care about and I believe is is worthwhile my time in being away from them. And I think what drives me in that department are, you know, these two little butterflies up here. Those are my two daughters in heaven. And I think that everything I do is to try to honor them. And I think because of them, that's heightened more so why my relationships with my students are so important to me because, you know, I can't, I can't take care of my daughters, but I can help my students. And I know that unfortunately, not all of our students have an adult rallying for them in their home life. And that's really unfortunate. And that's why I think it's our job and responsibility as teachers to try and fill in those gaps and be there for those kids. So, you know, when I look at, you know, back at my career, that's what I want to see is how many kids could I help have a better life, be a better person. That's my purpose. And thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my spiel. That's me. And I look forward to hearing more from Glenbard East.